Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about going fishing for flathead as well as setting up Renko for game fishing and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. So, after all these years, we finally get a real fishing video in. Went out fishing for a couple of days, and the first day I went out with Adrian, who you know from working on the Detroit, uh, his stepson Thomas, and also James from Remora Lures Australia. So, let's pick up there. As all the guys are coming from north, uh, organised to meet them here at the public wharf at the Tonga. Not too bad a morning. The forecast wasn't going to be great, but we thought, look, we'll head out and we'll just go to somewhere that suits the conditions. A few fish here. Jason wisely suggested, giving us an incoming tide, that we just sort of drift a bit and let them come to us. Is that off? Yeah, off's good. Yeah, off's good. <laughs> Tommy's got the bow. He's in action already. So Jason, what lure are you going to use for this? No idea. <laughs> Yeah. I'm the one that's got no idea. <laughs> ah, that didn't take you long. Is this the first fish on the boat? Look at it. Oh, I think it might be. Oh, yes. <laughs> so is that a tailor or something? I don't even yeah. know what fish it is. Is it? Yeah, right. So a tailor normally caught as live bait or something or kept? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Good for filleting. Yeah, right, okay. And smoking. Oh, nice. Oh, I need homes. Uh, my, the mechanic guy I trained under has uh, just built himself a six foot Smoker, he loves oh, them. Really? Yeah, he smokes all sorts of stuff. Congratulations. Eating, eating all the white bait, they are. Yeah, right. Popping them straight up. Yeah, just eat too much. Well, it's certainly the biggest fish caught. I think I might have caught like a, a three millimeter brim or something once. <laughs> and they're still out there. Very good. That's definitely a time record for me getting on a boat. Oh, have a go. No, no, you're right. <laughs> First cast. I will, I'm just... First cast, was it? <laughs> well done. I have one idea, no, yeah. I'm on first, you're all right. Is that the horse? No, I've just set it under here. Oh, okay. See what happens when you get a pro fisherman on board. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> a bit bigger. Could be a kingfish? Nah, it's our... Yeah. I think I'd jag him. Oh, really? Oh, no. <laughs> the most gutting part of fishing. Uh, the optimist in me. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Jason's suggesting we head out and try and find some snapper. So we're going to head out to about 40 metres on the chart. Just keep heading out till we see 40 and then wait for further instructions. When we got there, uh, Jason and Tommy fished with conviction while uh, Adrian and I casually held onto some rods and started talking about mechanical stuff. So with this uh, heat exchanger I took off the Vetus, um, so the header tank and the heat exchanger are one unit, you know, yep. um, but it's also the exhaust manifold, it's one unit, it's all one unit. Yeah. So if I get it really because they're five grand like to buy and it's corroded to shit it's gone like yeah. it's aluminium on, yeah. onto a met steel block and yeah, yeah that's right yep. um so if i re if i put that back on as the exhaust manifold and have an external heat exchanger it's is it going to overheat is it designed to have that coolant next to the heat exchange it, it, well it's designed as long as the water because the water is the exhaust manifold aluminium too? Yes, it's all aluminium. You're going to need to keep the water in it. Yeah, but then it's going to expand and not circulate, whereas it's normally... Well, it should, if you keep... So if I put an expansion header tank as well, maybe, and, uh, yeah, well, and put you could, a... You probably could. Put a recovery cap on that? Yeah, you should be able to. Um, as long as you draw the water from below the water pump and above the water pump, through the exhaust manifold, you'll be right. Ah, uh, keep it circulating. Keep it circulating through the exhaust manifold. Yeah. 
I'll have, I'll have a look. Send me some photos. I'll have a look. Yeah, I showed you. See, I, I'm determined not to buy the original part and spend, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's not in my boat, but I just, I just feel like there are people who make heat exchangers that are just two in, two out heat exchanger. Yeah, oh, absolutely. There's we, room everywhere to mount it. We just use them on fire pumps in buildings. Exactly, yeah. Because they, you, they have a tank outside, so they just, the, the water would just go through the heat exchanger and, and then when the water tank was empty, that was the end of the engine, not the end of the... Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> well, it was yeah. the end of everything, really. The fires, <laughs> the fires either burnt the joint down or... Yeah, right. Interesting. I feel like I'm pulling the boat in. Yeah. Oh, was that a... Oh, eight. Oh, wow. Yeah. Turn on. Is that coming this way too, by the looks of it? All yakkers. Marlin. Marlin? Marlin. Really? Yeah. Wow. Good chance of it. Oh, uh, Two in one. So is it slimy mackerel, is it? Like that? Yeah. yeah. Not only can he fix the Detroit, he can catch me. I didn't think I'd ever catch it. Oh, my hope was sufficient. <laughs> You're in good company with me, mate. <laughs> Got the birds out. Oh, you oh, I lost it. I was like good press the You should not have touched the camera. No. Occupational hazard. I don't want to spoil my perfect record, though. <laughs> Huge. It's massive, massive tuna. Massive. <laughs> Jason's just caught a whiting at 60 meters. <laughs> you jinxed me. I know, I said I was going to catch a whiting and uh, Jason did. Classic. <laughs> oh, hang on. Sorry, I would, would concentrate my beer sliding. <laughs> oh dear. How about that? That's pretty funny. So I think it's a hell of a roll, like it'll get a roll up, but it stables itself really quite fast, doesn't it? It's quite yeah. So was I talking to you about the um, uh, surveyor was saying just some bilge keels, just well bilge keels down the side, okay. they're just little thin, you know. Yeah, like what, two inches wide or three inches Exactly, wide. just really small, it'll make you be amazed and make a huge difference, yeah. And a really easy job to do. Yeah. Yeah. But don't worry about anything fancy, just do that and you'll, yeah, you'll be happy when you did it. So, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Adrian and I have uh, managed to catch each other's lines, but at least I've caught something. Very well told. Is patience. Patience is a virtue. I hooked up to something, so I've just handed my rod to Jason. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Probably Tommy caught it for him. <laughs> yeah, for me. Hands for me, I handed Jason. <laughs> so two fish both to Jason so far since we've been here. Looks like another whiting to me. Ooh, big flatty. Well, medium. Flatty. He's nice. Here's dinner. Nice. It's well and truly legal. Yeah, nice. Very good. Well done. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> Every time. What's the net, Tommy? Gaff. Gaff. I actually had a gaff and I gave it to Dave. Oh, did you? Yeah, I went, oh, what am I ever going to catch? He needs a gaff, so I gave it to him. <laughs> Came with the boat. Ooh, another flatty. Uh, what, sorry? Yeah. The size of it on a blue spot. Oh, different to... Uh... Bit of this, isn't it? Sure, bit of Alright. What's happening, Stu? Oh. You... I just... You've stolen someone's rod and reel! You went to the loo, so I grabbed your rod. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Ramora. Yes! <laughs> I want to use a different brand of Lewis, I don't have to do so much work. Look at that drag. <laughs> it's just spinning. You want to tighten the drag a little bit? A little bit, hit. that's it? Yep. Here we go. <laughs> Here I am actually holding his rod and reel for him. <laughs> With nothing on it. <laughs> 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 
Okay, we've got the mechanic over here. <laughs> He's bringing the net over. I've got the crane ready just in case. Phil's just making this look good, aren't you? I just pumping. You were supposed to muscles. Are you getting a sweater? <laughs> Hey, we're getting water in the boat now. Yeah. You're pulling it over too far. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'll go to the other side. Oh, uh, look, you've... It's pulling a You've foul hooked. A flatty. A big flatty. And that's how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> got him. I got you. You got slack nine now? I think that's fair. Oh, nice one. Well done. <laughs> oh, because, well, you don't eat, you don't eat fish. They are the best. You don't eat them. Oh, you don't eat fish. <laughs> Such a keen fisherman, too. We've um, we sprayed WD-40 on our baits. And they actually catch more fish. Yeah. Really? Wow. There's fish oil in there, isn't it? Uh, no, apparently it's a bit of an urban myth. Everyone says that, but. Oh, jeez. Yeah. 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 I'm going to try using a hook too. That obviously <laughs> works better. <laughs> we can totally sort that out with perspective, don't you worry. Zoom. <laughs> zoom, 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 zoom. Oh, woo! Huge. 10 kilos. <laughs> At least. See you, buddy. That's my job for the editing, isn't it? Ooh. Oh, I don't know what that was. What a red rock card. Somebody was telling me once quarter fish very similar, like quite. No, you can't. Yeah, apparently quite nice eating, but just, yeah. Somebody said it was like poor man's lobster or something. Yeah. But the fillets are really nice. <laughs> yeah, but the reality of. It just hurts to get them. Yeah, gotcha. Do you want pliers? Oh, you got them. <laughs> So where are the like a spines or? Yeah, on the dorsal. Yep. Right, yep. tuck him. See you, buddy. No, nope. I think you're not going to swim anymore. Oh, no, 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 he's coming good. Coming good. I never picked Adrian as one to uh, get overexcited and dramatise reeling a fish in. Oh, nice. Well done, Adrian. Beat him out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I must admit. Yeah. Well, here it comes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, real good. But I reckon, yeah, we were lucky. It waited for us. Made it back, had a fun day actually. It was really nice going out and just hanging out with the guys for a day and 
They're not doing anything on the boat. They kindly let me keep the flathead that they caught. I caught like one thing that I think it was born like an hour ago or something, so I got rid of it. Uh, trying to fill it now, but Jason wisely said, don't film your attempts to fill it, so I'm not. Got these little bits off, anyway, I won't. Good morning, pelicans. <laughs> your pole's lying down, mate. You're supposed to get one standing up. I think that pelican's mooning us. Anyway. Just about to pick Jason up and head off for a little bit of uh, trolling this time. That'll involve rigging up the rod holders on Renko, so we're going to pick Jason's brain about that because, um, you know, getting the right positions and the right angle, all that kind of stuff's really important. Back again with Jason from Remora Lures, and because I know nothing about fishing, as I always tell you, all well, I'm learning, <laughs> you know, uh, we're going to install the rod holders now, so we'll go through some of the things to think about when you're choosing the place to put them. So these are the rod holders I'm using. Um, they're rod holders, <laughs> that's all I can tell you about them. I've also made some spaces because of the top of the ballwalk here sticks out, so otherwise you'd hit here. Reel, I guess the reel needs to hang over the... High enough? High enough, yes. I'm pretty sure if we're, if that... Was right under the... Yep. Stainless, you, you've, you've allowed enough length for the... Yep, to hit there. Up. So it looks like possibly we can release this and move those. They don't look welded, yeah. I think they're just clamped. So yeah. we've got a little bit of wiggle room too, which is good. 30 degrees? Yeah, so when I drilled these at home, it was on Jason's advice to go 30 degrees. So that's the, the sweet spot. Yep. And you've only got to run two rods, so if you had four rods, yep. the other ones would be at 15 degrees. Ah, uh, okay. And not too much distance between them. Um, you get a rod wrap, like go up the top. If they're too far back, you can't reach the, the, the rod tips. And I think that's the mistake I would have made. I probably would have put them right in the corner. Yeah, so we'll see what it's like here. Yep. Not too heavy, but yeah. Oh, right, so it sits, gotcha, so it doesn't, yep. Uh, I was thinking, yeah, the wheel yep. might touch here. No, nah. you can turn the handle, and from the back of the deck, I can reach can run, there. Yeah, yep. so if Wrap it was weight, tip, yep. I can undo it from here. Yep. If it, you know, if it's a longer angle, steeper yep. angle. Steeper angle, you can't reach it. Yeah, it's or a short, a short rod, but yep. a bent butt rod, you'd be out here. Right out there, yeah. And if I mounted it right against the transom, you have no chance of reaching it. Yeah. So, so pretty much we're safe anywhere there. Yep. Done. All right. Let's walk up. repeat seven more to go <laughs> <laughs> in the first half of this video we noticed that once you're offshore this door does rattle around quite a bit so we're going to put a latch on it that day adrian tied what? it up <laughs> yeah what? nothing it's fine <laughs> <laughs> so we'll uh we'll fix that before we go to There you go, Adrian. Much better. <laughs> all right, now we'll go fishing. <laughs> it's all class. Now, this would normally latch, but because it's set back, so I may make a spacer for it, just so it doesn't need that. But that'll get us catching marlin. So you said we're looking for temperature more than depth? Yeah. So what are we at the moment? 33 meters and 21.3 degrees. What's a good temperature, you reckon? Summertime, 23s, but for Marlin. Yep. Um, but it's been reported, so. Right. So, until we see a current change, yep. current, current line or a, a temp change. So, it's slightly climbing, it's going up, yep. Cool. Still heading offshore, looking for that uh, temperature change. But uh, Jason just 
dumped me a present. He's out on back doing a few things. One of his remora lures he's given me. I'm gonna check it out. You keep an eye for boats, I'll check out my lure. we find our spot now so we can get it in the water. Oh, gone up 0.1 of a degree, 0.2. Thank you. <laughs> Temperature's climbing too, 21.5. This is something that uh, when you enter the day, do a loop around the main line. Yep. Then just over, nice. It's easy as that. Nice and easy to get back, little Under cow edge in this, yeah. Nice big loop so you don't get a kink in it. Yeah, right. Don't make a weak point in it. Inside is a, a hook lock. Yep. So that's called a mono twist. And what happens is... Oh, okay. You pull the crimp out. Yeah, right. You've got the chafe tube in there so it doesn't, doesn't wear off at the uh, front. Ah, gotcha. And then you can set the hook so you can have it up, down, left, right. Yep. I like it up when it's calm like this. <laughs> We're going back to land now. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Your autopilot's Yeah, right. autopilot's set on circle. Um, yeah. And if it's rough weather, have it keeling down. Oh, okay. And it'll swim down. Oh, down. right, okay. Based on the slope of the yeah. front here. You got this, you know, slant face, cup face, doesn't matter. Hook lock, they're just glued in. Yep. And there's a heap of different rules within the game clubs to hook present, like where its position is. Two two hooks or single hook, I prefer single hooks. Yep. So with marlin. Uh, you don't want one in the hand. Right. Two hooks, one in the fish, one in the hand. Yeah, you know, gotcha. Uh, That's a good it's a good reason to have one. So uh, you hold the lure? Yep. Once you've got your orientation, you pull it into the... It locks it into that, that tubing. Yep. In the rubber. Yep. So the crimp goes in. And then once the crimp's in, that's tight enough to hold it yep. that way. Put the chafe tube back, back inside. Oh, okay. So that brass tube doesn't rub against the... Um, yep, gets your mono. Mono. Yep. Wear it away. Right, now how much do we let out? Depending on the size of the boat. Yep. Scale the boat, it doesn't have to go that far. About there is. Oh really? Pretty good. 25, 30 metres. Wow, so not long, okay. And does the noise of the boat put fish off or attract them or? It attracts them. Okay. Especially with the, with the diesel. <laughs> with the <a> Detroit. <laughs> So this is a Goliath head. It's a slant, slant face. Yep. Usually put them out in the riggers. Out yeah, wide. right, okay, out wide, yep. Um, but they all work, they all work, yep. And sorry, so just to get it on a good day, you were saying you had the hook facing which way again? Sorry. So I... To get a bit more action out of the lures. Yep. Have them facing up. Up. When it's okay. a bit rough, have them facing down. down. Okay, yeah. But if you've got a double hook rig, yep. it doesn't really matter. Okay. Nice. I've got these, these are bench crimped with a chafe tube on the end. Oh, on the mono on top of yep. that. Nice. Just here, it's, it's, I, I use a cigarette lighter yep. and just burn the ends. So it that doesn't work. It won't pull through. Won't pull through, yep. Snap swivel, 
Yep. Four race. Right, nice. And then I've, I've you tie a double, you plat, I plat a double. Yep. So that way when you, you get oh, your fish Oh, okay, in, right. When you get the fish close to the boat. Yep. You've got two lots of line on the reel. Ah, oh, right. And so how long is the double for? It depends on the line class. Yep. But as long as it's on the reel and you've got a, a few metres on it, yep. it's fine. I guess I should drive us straight now we've got two lines in. No, it'll be right. Custom Remora Lure is wet. Let's head east. The people you meet offshore. This is another Stuart from Brooklyn. Because Stuart on the other boat was heading back in, he told us uh, about 110 metres is good where you get that uh, watercolour change, uh, which is something that Jason was telling me about before. Uh, so that's what we're going to look for. We're going to keep heading out 110, look for the watercolour change. Stuart was saying the uh, water temperature was a bit cold, he thought, so, um, you know, that's not ideal, but it's a beautiful day. No swell, sunshine, let's go. <laughs> Apparently these guys can go for your lures. <laughs> He's keen. Oh yeah, yep. So should we aim for them? If we uh, see them? Around this area. Just keep going? Just keep going. Yep. There's a bit more activity out here. Yeah, he's coming back. Don't pinch the lure. about 110 bouncing around water's certainly changed colour so much clearer out here Eventually it was time to head back into the Hawkesbury, albeit without our first marlin, but it was really nice to have Renko set up for the game fishing season that's uh, yet to come. Big thanks to Jason for the custom lure he made for me, very sweet, and also for helping me set up the rod holders and teach me the ropes when it comes to game fishing. We need the water to hit about 23 degrees when that current comes down from the north and that's when we're sort of on for the game fishing season, which shouldn't be too far away. So it's nice to know that we're all ready when those conditions are right, we can head back out and hopefully, you know, start catching some good fish. I'm heading off this afternoon to sail up to Port Stephens and Broughton Island with my mate Bronick. When I get back on the weekend, I've got the SDI solo scuba diving course and I have a bit of prerequisite study to do in the meantime, so I'll do that on the sailing trip. And then once that course is over on the weekend, the following week, I'm gonna start getting the Detroit ready to take out, get it up to Adrian's workshop, and we can get that fixed once and for all. But before we go, a few of you might remember the Mighty Sleazy, the old Ford LTD that was up at the workshop, the pretty old workshop. Uh, had a few problems with the engine block. So I met a guy called Mike through Paul, I do the diving with, and he runs a YouTube channel on all sorts of old cars, does rallying, all sorts of cool stuff, but he's a particular expert with these old Fords. So here we are at Mike's place. I'll show you some of the cool stuff he does. So he's got his 69 Mac 1 Mustang, nice condition. His rally car, which is <laughs> the coolest car, which I think is a... 1934 Plymouth, sir. It's beautiful. Yeah, okay, Bruce, I love the name too. <laughs> and a Landau that's almost finished. So 
clearly Mike is ambitious and not, uh, not the type to uh, shirk a challenge, so he's going to give us a hand with Sleazy. <laughs> so you're feeling confident we can get this thing going? Yeah. Nice. I'm feeling very confident, mate. And don't forget, uh, for anyone watching, you can check out our shenanigans with Sleazy on Shilby Wright Garage. Nice. Thank you. Appreciating your help with this. Mate, it is, it is a disaster and a pleasure <laughs> at the same time. I can't wait. That's Me good. either. Thanks, mate. Mike has now uploaded the first two videos in that project. The first video is picking the car up and getting it to his workshop. The second video is taking a Cleveland 302 from an old car of his, taking the good bits off the Cleveland 351 from Sleazy, putting them together, and hopefully getting that engine running for the first time in 20 years. I'll put a link to that video in the description and hopefully a clickable link somewhere in the corner of this video if I can figure it out, so be sure to check that one out. And I'll see you when I get back from Paul Stevens. Daffy's gone clucky and you're roaming around on your own. Would you like breakfast, Daisy? Is that what you're trying to tell me? All right, let's get you something. Come on. No, no, you're going the wrong way. Hunger, not fear. Watch him, he's gonna put you in the pot. Yeah, that's it. Cruising solo. Your starring role. <laughs> Come on. Don't hide. Come on. Back out. Daisy. Troll under the stairs. <laughs> there you go. Breakfast. I'm gonna get Daffy out of bed. Stop it being clucky. Daffy. Bad news. Bad news. It's time to get up. Sorry. Come on. It's all right. Relax. that mesh don't we all right come on get up you're even sitting on one of daisy's eggs not one of your own hmm <laughs> no rooster oh geez oh, yeah okay well you just eat out of the packet then <laughs> you're not supposed to eat out of the packet Come on, you know you're not supposed to. There you go. Oh, you idiot. Don't do that. Oh, there we go. Sorry about getting you up. You're wasting your time sitting there. Get off this. Up. Lift your foot. And sit. No. Enough. Enough for one day. Hmm? All right. Should've got that egg while I was there, shouldn't I? Let's do that. It's very warm after Daffy's sitting on it. <laughs> 